News. Thanks for joining me, Darren. It's a delight to be here. Thanks for having me. So, Darren, uh, we're going to talk about the 6th and how that day unfolded. But you revealed in your most recent reporting on Revolver News something that happened on January 5th that I don't think a lot of Americans really know about, but it was this monumental event that unfolded literally almost on the steps of the Department of Justice explained to the audience. Yes, um, and there are several things on the 5th, but I believe you're referring to the so-called Trump hippie van, uh, yes. colloquially referred to by researchers as the Trump hippie van. And this was a van with stop the steal insignia and at least presenting as people who would have an intention to go to the Trump rally the next day. Well, on the 5th, this so-called Trump hippie van was stopped right outside of the Department of Justice. And the federal law enforcement authorities discovered there were explosives in this van and firearms. Did you, uh, what did you find in there? Do you know? Sir, I can't comment Is on there that. anyone who, uh, who's authorized to comment? Nope. And they made a big deal out of it, as you would expect. They, you know, processed everyone in the van. They wanted to take DNA swabs, the whole works. And um, what's remarkable, well, there's a couple things that's remarkable about this. One is that I would imagine most of your listeners who are generally very educated on these matters have not even heard about this. And what's strange about that is that the media would have seemed to have every incentive in amplifying coverage of a story of, oh, look, another van of Trump supporters with explosives right outside of the Department of Justice. This is a huge deal. This is the next 9-11. Like, they would have far more justification blowing that up than, um, you know, the uh, treatment that they've given to the subsequent event of 1-6. And so why is this thing buried in local media coverage and something that nobody's talking about, nobody's covering? That's an interesting story in its own right. And we can speculate on that basis and say, hmm, if there was a threat of this magnitude right outside of the Department of Justice, it makes it yet more difficult to account for the fact that January 6th, the Capitol building and the surrounding environment enjoyed uniquely poor security. It wasn't just that they didn't have enhanced security, which would have been entirely called for and justified and even expected given something like this, and simply given that there would be a big politically charged rally nearby, but that it didn't even enjoy normal security on that day is something that is quite astonishing. But well, the, and Darren, yeah. now I've been to dozens of Trump rallies all over this country, and I have never seen a group called Hippies for Trump. And yet <laughs> all of a sudden on January 5th, they show up in this bus and we start to learn about one of the individuals who's on this bus. We later kind of uh, learn about him as black ski mask guy in your yep. reporting, but there's actually a little interview he does right yes. there on the fifth let's play that clip and then they try to get us to take uh uh they tried to get us to take a dna swabs yeah. dna swabs yeah what? see if uh if our dna matched the weapons that were found on the vehicle how many weapons i don't know how many, how many weapons did they find i think one or two yeah, I, they were pretty quick at getting they them were also hinting that there was a bomb on the bus you're absolutely right. So the the um, significance of this story goes far beyond the fact that there was this major terror scare effectively on the 5th right outside the Department of Justice. And even that couldn't justify normal levels of security on the next day when a major politically charged rally would occur uh, within uh, close proximity to the Capitol and other relevant buildings. And, 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 and then this but this very interview, this very person. Yeah who's on the hippies for Trump bus, who gives yeah. this interview, who is subjected to federal law enforcement questioning, then all of a sudden appears on the 6th. Today. They weren't detained, they weren't held. They right. yet again, black ski mask guy appears on the 6th. What are we to think about the fact well, that this yeah. individual on the 6th seems to be animating violence, on the 5th has an encounter with law enforcement and seemingly has faced no charge. 
Well, this you're absolutely right to point this out. And so in the latest bombshell revolver.news investigative report, we cover a handful of characters who were at the uh, peace monument, near the peace monument at the very beginning, right, you know, well before Trump finished his speech, by the way, they were all hanging out in the same spot early in the day, and they all went on to play decisive roles in creating the conditions for the Trump rally to turn into a riot at the Capitol. And they did that by removing barriers, cutting down fencing, effectively creating a booby trap so that the people coming over to the Capitol from the re rally had no idea that they were technically trespassing on Capitol grounds because the barriers had been removed. And then, of course, you had various provocateurs ginning them up and we cover those people too. And this individual black ski mask guy who was in the Hippies for Trump van is one of those key individuals who just showed up very early on and was methodically, in a seemingly cool, detached, professional way, removing barriers and helping to create the conditions for this rally to become a riot. And what's amazing about this individual is that we know that the feds know who he is because he was stopped in the van the previous day. There's not even this plausible deniability excuse of, oh, they haven't found out who he is. We know that we they know who he is because he was stopped in the van literally the day before. And what are the chances that this guy who was stopped in this bizarre hippies for Trump van with explosives and firearms right outside of the Department of Justice and let free then just happens to be one of the key individuals removing fencing to allow for the riot to occur on January 6th. We know that they know who he is and he's unindicted.